Hello everyone. So I wanted to do a What's New in LabVIEW 2023 Q3 video. Um, I wouldn't normally do quarterly release videos, but actually there's a lot of new features in here which I'm excited by and I hope you are too. Um, obviously there's LabVIEW Zoom, but there's actually a, a lot more features which I'm potentially more excited by other than LabVIEW Zoom. Um, so I'm just going to place down some code on LabVIEW 2023 block diagram. Um, oh yeah, the background dots here and on the front panel, they're just my personal preference. LabVIEW 23 doesn't come like that by default. Um, so I'll control space, uh, state machine. Let's just place one of those down. Great, and now I should be able to demonstrate Zoom. Now we have something to look at. If you do a control and then scroll wheel, you can zoom in and underneath this block diagram, you can see there's a, um, a, what's it called? A tip strip saying your current zoom level, which in the beta, they didn't have that. So it's quite nice to see where, where we are at. Um, the, the image quality of the zoom isn't amazing but it does allow you to you know see like very fiddly connector panes so that's good um a couple of shortcuts if we do control zero that will reset us back to 100 percent zoom if we do f2 that will effectively pad out the border of your entire vi so i've seen a fair share of massive vis which being able to F2 in venue can zoom in on like a specific area. Like that, that's quite helpful. Like previously we would use the navigation window, which is control shift N. Um, and that would give you the similar sort of functionality, but F2 is actually quite, quite nice. Um, I've also noticed that the navigation window does freeze up the first time you load it in LabVIEW 23. Uh, Q3. Um, I have reported that to NI, so I don't know, let's see if they fix that. Um, a couple of things I also noticed with the Zoom is things like these free labels, like they've sort of come out of kilter, but they do reset themselves when you go back to 100% um, Zoom. So control zero and it's reset itself. So there are a few quirky bugs like that. Um, so you'll notice we have control scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Now that was the shortcut to filter through cases. But now if you do control shift in the scroll wheel, that's how you can scroll through like event structures or case structures. Um, when that was first announced, I was a bit annoyed and wound up, wound up that I have to change my muscle memory. But actually, you know, I think it's going to be fine. Like I had the same gripes when I, when you first right clicked an a node and then the top items were um, create control, create indicator, etc. Not in 23. Um, when that changed, but actually you do just get used to it. Um, if you want to change the font size of something, it used to be control shift plus and minus or control plus and minus, but you'll see that now zooms in and out. Oh, and Q3 is not responding again, but that's fine. Um, the shortcut for changing font sizes is now control and then the angled brackets. So I'm, I'll just do control zero to, to reset the zoom, select everything and then control and then the angle brackets to increase this text size. And I quite like that actually because it's in line with other programs. Um, I didn't know any other program that used um, control plus or minus for changing text size, but the angled brackets are, are fairly common. Okay, I think that's everything for block diagram zoom. It's, you yeah, know, it's fine. Um, before we go on to the others, I do have a quick plug. Um, I just want to hype up my 
um, Lavi training course a little bit. I won't take long. But if you go to udemy.com forward slash learn LabVIEW, this is a training course I put together um, maybe a few years ago now. Yeah, March um, 21. Um, I have almost a thousand students on it. It's got 4.5 um, stars out of five. Um, and in this course, I just go through developing an application with the students. And so it's more like project focused as opposed to like academic focused. But yeah, read through the, the reviews. And if you like, if you or someone you know wants to learn the foundations of LabVIEW, um, I could recommend this course. Um, but yeah, uh, udemy.com forward slash learn LabVIEW. Um, it's only £70 or £80 here in the UK, um, which broadly translates to dollars and euros right now. All right, with that out of the way, let's go on to some other features. Um, creating new branches. So wiring in LabVIEW is kind of different. If I go close to a wire, notice how I now have a, a dot appearing. If I click on that dot, invent I uh, create a branch like previous versions, but if I now double click, notice how an indicator has just appeared. Now, if I click on here and click again, okay, I have another indicator. If I click on this one, I can now create a control by selecting it and double click. I could also create a constant. So let's click on here again, if then control double click and that's created a constant. So if I wanted to wire in and out the error terminals here, I could click on this node, double click, and it's created an indicator. And I could double click here on this side. Oh, that's double clicking on a free label, double click down here. It's created a control. Control B to remove that broken wire or I could control double click and it creates a constant. I, I quite like that. And that's probably the reason why if you right click the create constant, create indicator, create control, it's no longer appearing at the top of the menu. Instead, it's been put back into create constant control indicator. Um, See, so yeah, I actually really like that feature. On the forums, other people aren't so keen, but I think everyone will just get used to it. Um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, a label to object. Now this is a feature I'm actually super excited by. Create a new VI here. It's gonna change the way that I create enums um, going forward. I'm gonna create a free label by double clicking. This is an enum. So I've got a, a new line separated free label here. And if I do control space with the cursor still inside this um, free label, notice how quick change has appeared. Now I can convert this free label into an enum, or I could choose any other um, suitable data types or structures even. So like this um, formula node. Create, change it to a string array, to a set, to a map. We'll come on to maps later. Um, but yeah, enums, this is going to be the way I now create enums much quicker. I can then right click and then make type def. Um, so, oh, uh, the other thing is you can also select data from, let's say, notepad or a spreadsheet. Control C, go to edit, special paste. And let's say numeric array and or paste it as a numeric array. And you can also do control shift V to bring up the same menu. One thing I noticed here, numeric array goes into a 2D array. If I wanted a string array, this is appearing as a 1D string. Just something to be aware of. Okay, now with maps, it took me a while to figure this one out, but with maps, you have a key value pair. So maybe key value, key to, 
value two. This is the way I expected it to to work. So if I do control space here, if I go to map, you see it, it appears empty. What you actually have to do is separate the key and value by a tab. Now in LabVIEW, this has been one of my gripes for ages. I don't know how to type a tab in, in a free label. Admittedly, I've not looked into it. So if someone can tell me how to do that in the comments, I'll be pleased. What I've ended up doing is in Notepad, typing a tab, Control C, Control V, Control V, uh, Control V. And now I can right click. I, oh yeah, you can right click quick change or do Control Space. Okay, so that still didn't work. Another thing you can do is give this map a name. So it might need a, a name before it works. Annoyingly, this was working when I was testing this out earlier. Oh, you know what it is? I mucked about with some of the VIs um, in the background, so it might... So I might have actually broken it for myself. But the idea is that you can give your map a name in quotation mark, in speech marks like this. You then have key value pairs separated by a tab. Like so. Um, and actually, if I quick change this to a string, I can right click and then change the codes display. So yeah, they are all tab separated. Okay, um, in the source code, quick change is actually a plugin. So if you go into your plugins directory, a uh, source code dialog, and then quick change, you can look at the plugins for quick change. Go to string map, base string map. And this is where I worked out how, how this actually worked. Basically your, your text from your free label comes in here. Uh, control double click to open up the box diagram. Oh yeah, I did change it. Sorry, my bad. That's on me, not NI. Um, I made it a uh, double pipe separated. By default, by right, control C, control V. Yeah. So by default, this should now work. Yep. Quick change map. Yeah. So we have our key value pairs, visible items, label, and do you know the name I gave it? It changed the name of the label. Um, so I'm going to call a new map, new map, Tom, and then I'll copy and paste a tab. Again, if there's a better way of getting a tab into a free label, let me know. Tom McQuillan, that's my name. Right click, quick change, map. And there we go. Nice one. Um, so yeah, I was playing around with this earlier um, because I couldn't type a tab, but I could type a keyboard character. If I click on this, I can try out the new feature of control double click and it comes up with um, the uh, string constant. And in the JKI state machine, oh, there's also a training course for the JKI state machine you could check out. Um, we use this uh, double angled bracket to separate uh, messages and commands. So let's try that now. Quick change, map, yeah. That's cool. So yeah, advice to my feedback friend, I perhaps throw this in the configuration file somewhere or yeah, make it easier for us to create the labels.
What else did I want to talk about? Oh, so yeah, this is a feature I'm also very excited about, where you can select a, a piece of code and then like throw it into a structure. Let's go into, oh. okay, this code here. Let's say I want to disable all of this. Normally, you would go into structures and then diagram disable structure or quick drop, quick drop, um, PDS or diagram disable structure. But now you can just select this, do control space, and then we could put it into a for loop, into a while loop, case structure, etc., or diagram disable structure like that. And I think that's really neat. We can right click this again, do control space. There's even a an option to create a sub VI of that code. And don't save. So yeah, I'm really liking that feature. Um, okay, second to last feature I want to talk about is highlight execution. If I run this code, um, I'll put on highlight execution and I'll make it do a thing by clicking OK. You will notice that the highlight execution um, animation has changed and I really like this new animation. Um, there is an Easter egg actually in LabVIEW where you can make Nigel the Eagle um, appear on the on the wires. Now I wonder if that Easter egg still still works. Um, but yeah, so you can see the animation has updated there, and I'll change this timeout to something so the code continuously loops around. Um, now this this looks quite nice, but you can also change the speed of it. You notice how there's a little black arrow now? If you click and hold or click this arrow, one thing I found is when highlight execution is set to slow, it can be a bit difficult to get this menu. You can change it to medium speed. And now the highlight execution has sped up. And for me, this is probably the fastest I would want it, but you can speed it up even more. But again, opening this menu, go to fast and like, I'm not really too sure who this is helpful for, but I suppose what you could do is set a breakpoint at a piece of your code, go super fast up to that breakpoint, and then continue at a slower speed. But again, you may as well go at full speed to the breakpoint. But anyway, the option is there. Um, and lastly, there's very fast, which just appears like a blur. And now if I click OK, like <laughs> I, I could see the different cases filter through, but yeah, it, it was too fast. Um, so I'll probably keep this on slow, to be honest. Um, if I'm in debugging mode, I probably want to chill out for a bit and just see what's, what's happening. Um, okay, so that's highlight execution. Whilst that's doing its thing, we can also talk about the build cache. So when we build an executable in LabVIEW now, um, in 23Q3, um, the build is being uh, cached in LabVIEW memory, or is being cached, sorry, in the LabVIEW databases. And so the next time you, you build, an ex build an executable or a PPL, the build will be faster. Um, you can clear the cache, in the same way that you would clear um, any other cache in LabVIEW by going to advanced, uh, clear compiled object cache. If an application builder here, I've not built anything on this um, virtual machine yet, so it's saying zero, but this is how you would clear the app builder cache. Also, if you change the build specification in any way, I believe the cache is also cleared. Um, so yeah, if you, so build the build process in LAVI 23Q3 should be much quicker for subsequent builds. However, if you're having issues with your builds, just clear the cache and, and try again. All right, cool. So I think that's everything I wanted to go through in LAVI 23Q3. Um, let me know in the comments what, um, what your favorite feature is and yeah, see you soon. Bye.